Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I went to Five Below and searched for blanks that I could use for sublimation. I looked for items made out of 100% polyester. I found quite a few and here are some of the ones that I'm going to be testing out in this video. I would love to hear if you've tried any of these or what you've sublimated from Five Below. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribed if you are new to my channel. And let's get into the video. Here's the Sherpa blanket that I found. I bought a light pink color. I just wanted something that was light so that my sublimation ink will show up pretty well in it. I love this blanket because it is super soft. It's a pretty good size. And if you look at the tag, that's where it shows what it's made out of. And here it says 100% polyester, which is what you want for sublimation. I'm creating my designs in Canva this time. I kind of go back and forth between Canva, Silhouette Studio, and Cricut, but I've been really liking Canva. So what I do is I go up to create a design and I am going to go to custom size. My sublimation paper is eight and a half by 11 inches. So I am going to make that my size. I'm going to come up here for some reason. It's PX. It automatically comes up with and I am going to type in eight and a half by 11. Then I'll just select create new design. I have all of my PNG images that I'm using for this video uploaded already, but what you would do is go to upload files and you would just go into your downloads and find whatever PNG image that you're using. So I'm going to hit cancel since I have these uploaded already. I am going to select on the one I'm using for my blanket. I believe all of my images that I've downloaded are from Etsy and I can leave links in my description box for them because some of them are so cute. So first what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring these in because I go off of the dimensions with this. So I'm just going to bring this in. Now for my blanket, I just want to make my design as big as I can make it. My printer is the Epson ET2760, so it cannot print as large as some of the others. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this bigger, but I do have a little hack that does help to increase the size. What I do is I turn the whole image 90 degrees. So if I'm going to turn this here, now I can size this along the whole length of the paper. That really helps to make it bigger. Okay, now that I have that done, I am going to download my image onto my computer. To do that, I'll go share. I'll select download. I'm going to download it as a PNG. Now I'll come down here and open this up. I have a Mac computer, so if you have a Windows, it'll be just a little different. Okay, here's my image. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File and I am going to select Print. Now here's my printer settings. This is always really important when you're doing sublimation. I am going to switch it from my inkjet printer to my sublimation printer. I have it saved as last few settings. I need to go in and save it as a preset, which I might just do now. Okay, I saved that as a preset because I've been meaning to do that. But I'll show you my settings here. If I go to print settings, I have the media type set to premium presentation, paper mat. My print quality is set to high quality and I have my mirror image turned on. Also in my Mac settings, I have the printer set to printing slow. If I go over to my color matching, I have my Cosmo ink profile set up. I have a video showing how I set up all my settings, so I can link that down in my description box. Now I'm ready to click print. I'm using a sub for my sublimation paper. I really like this paper. I buy it on Amazon on the back. It has writing on it. So you know that you want to print on the blank side. You'll want to know which way your paper prints. Mine prints with the white side facing me. Like I said earlier, I turned my high speed printing off on my Mac settings. So this prints pretty slowly. I'm using my Cricut Easy Press for all of my projects. You can use a heat press as well. For my settings, I'm using 400 degrees at 60 seconds for most of my projects. I'll let you know if I change my time and temp for any of them. 
I'm using my Cricut Easy Press Mat. You'll want something to press into like that if you're using the Cricut Easy Press. I also have parchment paper on top. This just prevents any of the ink bleeding through onto the mat. After I've straightened out my blanket, I run a lint roller over the area that I'll be adding my ink. This part is super important. It is not a step that you want to skip. Otherwise, sometimes lint speckles can show up on the product after you're done heating it through. Here I'm cutting around the design. You don't want to keep those straight edges because sometimes that can transfer into whatever you're heating. So I've definitely made some mistakes in the past and I have learned from those. Some people rip off the sides, but I find just cutting around the design works for me. Also, you can see those leaves look blue. Don't panic if the color's a little off. Sometimes it means there's a problem, but other times it just has to be heated through and it changes the color. I place my paper face down where I want it on the blanket. Then I add heat resistant tape to hold it in place. I forgot to preheat my blanket. I normally recommend doing that after you lint roll. I would just place butcher paper on top of the blanket and heat it through for just a few seconds. I didn't notice any problems from skipping that step, but it's still something that I always like to do. I add butcher paper on top of the sublimation paper, then press my easy press down, sorry for the odd angle there, and I let the time go down for the full 60 seconds. I don't move my easy press around at all, I keep it still just because you don't want to be moving it around, it can cause some ghosting and things like that. I remove my butcher paper and usually I'm way too impatient to let it cool down, so I take the tape off pretty quickly, then I remove my sublimation paper and here's how it turned out. This transferred super well. This blanket is so soft and cozy. I think it would be fun to do designs on the entire blanket. I just know it would be more time consuming. Also, it does have those pressed lines where it was heated. If anybody has any tips on how you can get those out, definitely let us know. Next, I'm going to add a sublimation design to this pillow. This is called Poodle Hair Plush Pillow. It's made of 100% polyester. Five Below has a few different pillows that would work for sublimation. For this one, I am adding it to a little reading nook that I made in my kid's toy room. Now I'm going to grab my next design. I'll be adding this onto the pillow and I decided I wanted to make it about eight and a half inches for the width. I'm not sure if I mentioned that before. You can see that little black box. That is where you can see what the dimensions are. I think that looks good. So I am going to download this. Now I'm going to go up to file and I'll select print. I'm going to use my exact same settings that I did before. I have it set to my preset with my sublimation and I'll select print. I follow a similar process as before. First I lint roll my pillow, then I actually remembered to preheat my pillow this time. So here you can see I just place butcher paper on top of the pillow and I would preheat it for about 5 to 10 seconds. Then I cut around my design and add my heat resistant tape. Who else adds probably way too much heat resistant tape? I just get nervous that it's going to shift around so sometimes I go a little bit overboard. I add my butcher paper then add my easy press on top. This is another strange angle but I was trying to get enough pressure on top of the pillow. Here's the fun part again. I remove the tape, then remove the paper. It's so fun to see how it turned out. It looks like this transferred really well. Here's the pillow in my kid's little reading nook. I feel like I could have made the design just a little bit bigger, but I love that I can buy this $5 pillow and add a cute design onto it. Next, I found these faux fur cabin socks that I wanted to test out. They are super soft and cozy, so I would definitely pick these up if you spot them at your store. I'm going to grab my image, 
For my size, I decided to do three inches for the width. I want this design on both socks, so I am going to select the image and I'm just gonna select duplicate. This doesn't take up this whole page, so I'm actually going to add one of my other images that I'll be using for a different project. I am gonna grab these coffee cups, which I think this is so cute. I'm gonna be adding this to a shirt, so I'm just going to print this out with this design. I just brought the box in a little bit, and then I'm just gonna make this about eight and a half inches for my width. I absolutely love these designs. Once again, I got these on Etsy and I just can't get over how cute they are. Okay, now I can just download this. And I'll select print. I have my preset set, so I'll hit print again. These socks do have those little grippy things on the bottom, so you won't want to heat that or add ink to that. I'm going to add the ink to the foot part of the sock, but you can also add it to the ankle part as well. I lint roll my socks, then I preheat them with my Easy Press, then I cut out my two designs. I place my designs face down, then add my tape. I also definitely recommend a tape dispenser like this. It just makes it a lot easier when you're using all of this tape. Now I'm ready to press my designs. I do both of them at the same time. Then I remove my paper and tape and reveal the design. As you can see, this one did not turn out. The smiley face on the right especially just looks really sad, but this does have kind of a lot of pieces to it with the letters and smiley face. Let me know if you've tried these and if you got anything to work on them, but it might just be a little too shaggy for sublimation. Now I'm going to test out some slippers. This material is similar to the pillow that I did and it's not as shaggy like the socks, so I think it'll work well. This is also 100% polyester. Since the socks didn't work out, I'm using the same exact design because I think it is super cute. I follow my same sublimation process as I have done for the others, but for these slippers, I decided to press each one separately. I just felt like I could just make sure I got a nice even press doing it that way. Let me know in the comments if you have tried any of these projects and how they turned out for you, or if you found different products at Five Below. I love testing out all different things. Now that I'm done pressing them, I can remove the paper and tape, and this transferred so much better. Here's another look at these slippers. It is honestly making me so excited for Christmas. They're just super cozy, and I love how they turned out. I'm going to test out a cropped hoodie. This is really cute. It's very lightweight. I found it in the spring, so I'm not sure if it's available right now, but definitely keep your eyes out for it. When adding sublimation to shirts, sweatshirts, anything like that, you'll want to add butcher paper on the inside of it because the ink will bleed through onto the back. I'm cutting another piece of butcher paper to place on top and to preheat with my Easy Press. And I made a huge mistake with this shirt. I forgot to lint roll, which at the way beginning of the video, I said, don't forget that step. And I'll show you what it looks like after not lint rolling. I add my t-shirt guide. By the way, I love this. I just downloaded a PDF for it and printed it off on cardstock. It is great. Then I add my tape and heat press over my design. Here's how it turned out. I am totally obsessed with this design. I think it turned out so cute. The colors are so vibrant. It just looks even better in person. But here you can see the specs on the sweatshirt. And honestly, it's kind of hard to have it pick up on camera. It is way more noticeable in person. So I'm so bummed that I forgot to lint roll. I am gonna have to search for another one of these hoodies at Five Below. 
Thigh Below has a ton of new Squishmallows out. These are so soft and so adorable. My daughter is obsessed with them. And it also has that perfect spot to add a personalization to it. For my Squishmall, I'm going to personalize it with my daughter's name. I'll grab my text. I have actually uploaded a text into Canva. I pay for the subscription, so I don't believe that you can do that if you don't pay for it, but I don't know for sure. I'm gonna add my heading. I'm gonna type in Quinn. And now I'm gonna come up to my font and I am going to grab the font Varsity. If you wanna use a font that you've downloaded and you don't pay for the Canva subscription, then you can use other websites as well. You can even use Cricut to print off of. Now I'm gonna go up to my color and I have a specific color that I'm using for it, so I'm gonna type it in here. I'm going to size it. I'm gonna make it one inch for the height. I don't wanna just print off of this because I have this whole paper here. So I'm gonna also add some images for my next project. I'm doing a neck pillow. And for that, I am going to be grabbing a rainbow. I'm going to be adding multiple of these rainbows to the pillow. So first I'm gonna size it. I'm gonna bring this back down. And I'm just going to make this two inches for the width. I'm going to print out 20 of these. I think that should be a good amount to add to the pillow. So what I'm going to do is I am just going to hit copy up here. I'm just going to do it a few times and then line it up. And then I'm going to add it to the whole page. Okay, I have all of them here. I am going to go up to share and download this. Then I'm just gonna go to File, Print, and hit Print. Here I'm just cutting around her name, then I prep the Squishmallow for sublimation. I just lint roll, then I heat my heat press over it to preheat it, trying not to skip any steps this time. <laughs> Then I'm ready to heat press it. I'm doing the time at 50 seconds instead of 60 seconds for the Squishmallow. Here's how it turned out. The sublimation ink transferred so well. I'm not sure why I made her name so small though. Sometimes I just measure weird. I could have made her name a lot bigger, but I gave this to my daughter and she absolutely loved it. Next up is a travel neck pillow, which is made out of 100% polyester, and this was perfect because it was white and completely blank, so perfect for sublimation. This project took a little longer because I had to cut out each individual rainbow, and then I also pressed it separately, so I'll show you how I did that here. I started rearranging my rainbows on the neck pillow and realized that I did not lint roll or preheat my pillow, so I don't know what was up with me this day. I was kind of all over the place. I removed everything, then I used my lint roller over this. Also, I turned on my Easy Press Mini since I'm using this for my neck pillow. I just turn it on to the highest heat setting, which is having all three of those turned on. I run my Easy Press Mini over the whole pillow to preheat it. Also, this neck pillow does not have a case where it removes. If it did, I would be using my Easy Press machine or heat press, but this one unfortunately does not have that. Then I just arranged the rainbows on my neck pillow. I just tried to make sure that it was evenly spaced out. I'm heating each one separately, so I press my butcher paper on top of one, then I press my Easy Press Mini on top of that. I just make sure that it's covering the whole design and press it down well. I did this for one minute and that seemed to be the perfect time.
Here's how it turned out. I just did the front, I didn't do the back, but if you pick these up, you can do the back if you want to. But I love the rainbow design. I think it is so cute. And what's fun about these is you can personalize them however you like. So if you were going on a trip to like Disney World, you can add Mickey or Minnie Mouse, or if you're going on a girl's trip, you can personalize it with something to go along with that. For my last project, I'm going to test out this faux leather notebook. I have been seeing this on TikTok where some people have been adding sublimation to it. So I'm really excited to give it a try and see if it works. Here I'm just removing the paper and taking off the tag. My paper size is 8.5 by 11. It should work for the notebook. I am going to grab this image. This is a digital background that I downloaded from Design Bundles, and I am just going to make this the size of my paper. I'm trying to kind of line it up a little bit. I don't want this little edge here, so I'm just going to bring it over just a tiny bit. You have to double click on it. Now I'm just going to download this and print it off the same exact way that I have done the others. When it printed, it had a thin white border on each edge of the paper, so I'm just using a paper cutter to remove those. I lowered my heat press to 375, and for my time, I did 45 seconds. First, I lint rolled my notebook just to get any of the debris off of it. Then I add butcher paper on top and preheat the notebook. And what's great about this is it also helps flatten the notebook as well. Now I add my paper to it. On the sides, you can see it didn't fully cover it, so I was a little nervous of how it would turn out, but I add my heat resistant tape on both sides so that it sticks down well. I add my butcher paper, then press it down with my easy press. Sadly, my camera shut off as I was removing the paper, but that is what I did next is remove the paper. And as you can see, there is this film on top of it. So I wasn't sure if the paper stuck to it or what it was or if I overheated it. But I ended up adding some rubbing alcohol to it and scrubbing it off with a paper towel. So when I did that, it took it off, but for some reason it kind of came back, like the white would come back. So I don't think I filmed this part, but after I tried the rubbing alcohol, I just got a paper towel wet with just water, and that is actually what totally got rid of it. So if you are making this project and this happens, I would just skip the rubbing alcohol, and I would just grab a paper towel and get it wet with that. I also saw someone that made this where she said you would want to uh, spray it with some type of sealant because the ink can smudge or smear. I didn't have that problem at all with it. Whenever I touched it, none of it was smearing. So that's kind of up to you if you want to do something like that. Here is how it looks. Oh my gosh, I love it. I thought it was going to be a fail. So I'm glad that it ended up working out and once again, you can personalize these however you want, which is pretty fun. They do sell white ones, but it was out of stock in my store, but I think this was a success. Here's one more look at all of the sublimation projects. If you have a favorite, definitely let me know. I'm also thinking about going to the Dollar Tree and searching for some sublimation blanks from there. If you want to see that, definitely let me know in the comments below. Once again, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel if you are new, and I hope you all have a great day.